Hello everyone and welcome to our integration series webinar today. Today our integration is going to be with BizTrack. So we're going to show you how you can take the information from an Envisioneer model and pass that over to BizTrack and use that in your point of sale quotes and your orders. We're going to start off the presentation by going over and reviewing the BIM information that we're going to be pulling off the model from Envisioneer. Then we're going to go into Envisioneer and show you how you obtain all of the values that we're going to pass over to BizTrack. And then we're going to pass the presentation over to the folks at BizTrack and they're going to show you how they can absorb all of that data that we're going to send over and how you can use it inside of BizTrack. So let's get started. So in our past presentations that we've been using on the integration series, we've been talking about why automate. So we've been talking about sales and marketing, putting information in your decor centers that you can pull from the Envisioneer model, creating your quotes, your permit drawings, sending things over for engineering. And now today we're going to focus in on the control systems and creating the links to the point of sale systems for your accounting purposes and your ordering purposes. But you can see that all the information from this little diagram that we can pull off of one BIM model. And that's what makes um, using a BIM model efficient. So that when you create the model, whether it be for initial presentations to a client or for working drawing purposes, you can still pull information for all of these other reasons from that model. So I'm going to jump into Envisioneer so that we can show you how we can pull that information from an Envisioneer model. So I'm just going to pull up my Envisioneer. So here inside Envisioneer, I have created a model. And this model, as you're aware, can be started right inside Envisioneer, so you can create your own designs. Or in the case of this one, I'm just gonna return it down to a 2D view down at the very bottom here. I brought in a PDF as the basis to start because I'm going to be using this one primarily for an estimate. So I went up to File, Import, imported the PDF file, or that also could be a CAD file if you get the uh, DWG or DXF, or if you can only obtain a JPEG or a a bitmap copy, maybe they've just scanned an image of the file, you can also bring that through our project trace image. Once you've imported that file, like you can see the underlying PDF, then you're just going to trace over top of it, like you would be creating a model using the walls, door, window openings, floors, ceilings, roof, uh, stairs, railings, columns, and members tools. When you're tracing over the objects, and I'll pop this back into a 3D view so we can look at those objects, each one of those objects has information behind it that we're ultimately going to be passing over to BizTrack. So if I take a look at this wall as an example, I'm going to look at its properties. Just by highlighting and tracing over top of that PDF, we created a two by six stone wall. And that two by six stone wall knows that it's a framed wall and that it's using two by sixes. And looking at the two by sixes that it's going to be using, it has all of these purchased item links. So when it's used, um, looking at this wall and knows that the usage is going to be studs, it knows to grab these pre-cut stud links, or if it's for a top plate or a bottom plate, or maybe some blocking um, in the wall itself, it has all of these cut lengths, and each one of them has specific rules. So as an example, if we look at this 10-foot length, down here in the lower right, it knows don't use it for plate material. We prefer to use 16-foot boards, as an example, or don't use it for blocking. And our stud pieces know that they can only be used for studs. So when it's framing out that model and putting in the framing data behind it, it has all of those rules that it can follow. It also knows the trim associated to it, so we're going to get linear footage of baseboard or crown molding or casing, um, sills. And then for all of the other materials, they're found here in the quantity tab. So when I'm building out this two by six stone wall, it knows I'm going to need materials for the stone, the mortar, the wall ties. 
So depending on the materials that you're supplying or the materials that you want to quantify, you can edit and change this list by either removing materials you know you won't want to supply or that might be part of a different contract or edit them to add in even more materials in. Each one of the materials that are being quantified as we draw this wall are being quantified by a formula that's attached to it. So if I just create this a little bit longer here, as we're drawing out this wall, it's taking the area of the wall, adding back in the openings, which are ultimately subtracted when you put in an opening, and then dividing it by the area of a roll of house wrap. So it knows just how much it can add in for that house wrap or sheathing tape or any of the other elements. And you can add um, any kind of waste factors that you want to as well. So these are all the values, the information that are attached to each one of the BIM items in this model. So as you're even just tracing over a PDF, it's going to start quantifying all of these different values. We find that it's always good to do a back check. And we do that in a couple of different manners of all of the different values you're putting in for the elements. First off, we have all of these common measurements. So as we're drawing this wall, it's also going to spit out to us the total interior wall area, the total exterior wall area, the interior length of the wall, and the exterior length of the wall. So you can use those values just to double check to make sure that you're getting the right quantities of all the different materials that you might be specifying that weren't part of the original database here. Once you're done that, you can also double check your values by coming up here and doing a visual look at the model. So I'm just going to put this into another kind of 3 view, looking down over everything. And then I'm going to go up to View, Framing, Display the Framing. And this will give us a good look of all of the various framing pieces that we have in this model. So if I want to look inside or look closer at a certain element, I can do so. And then I can kind of walk around and look at all of the different framing pieces of this model to make sure that it's quantifying everything um, the way I would want it to, to frame it out ultimately. All of these as well, if I put this back into a non-framing mode, can also be um, put into a wall panel diagram. So that's another way of looking at the individual walls and how they're going to be framed so you can see each wall and how you're going to frame that out. Those can also be printed. So that could be, you know, kind of a value added service that you're providing to, to the builder, if you're not the builder yourself, on how this wall is going to be put together. So each element, like the wall, has all of that information behind it. That also includes the floor surfaces. If I come inside here, let's come inside and take a look at the great room here. If I wanted to look at the materials for the hardwood flooring, if I'm going to be supplying that, or if I just pan down a little lower underneath this floor, we can also see that we have um, floor framing materials um, and beams. All of those can be um, quantified as well, and I'll get lengths of those. Um, and also things like windows and doors. So when we're looking at windows and doors, um, we're going to get the quantity. And each one of these as well are going to have a part number. And this is ultimately what's going to tie the information that you see in Envisioneer to BizTrack. So it's going to recognize the SKU numbers that we're producing if they're matching into the database that you've created in BizTrack. So we do have a service that will allow those to be matched up. and we we can provide that service for you. We'll get your information from BizTrack of all your SKU numbers. We'll put them inside Envisioneer so that when you're creating the various elements in Envisioneer, um, you'll be passing them directly over to BizTrack and they'll recognize that SKU number that you're passing over. So depending on the information you want to pass over, you can tell it to include in the quantities or not. So ultimately, if you don't want to include things like windows and doors, if you're going to be using another um, product to do your quantities of windows and doors, you can say, don't include this in the quantities. I don't want to see the window and door passed over to BizTrack. Or you can say, yes, do include that. That'll be part of my 
quote that I'm going to send over to BizTrack as well. So all elements that you draw will have all of that quantity information attached to them so that they can have the potential of being sent over to BizTrack. So I'm just going to put that back into 2D to kind of review everything that we talked about. So in Envisioneer, you can start to design the model just by using our walls, doors, windows tools. Or as in the case here, you can see that underlying this entire design, and I might just zoom in a little closer here, is a PDF. So you can always import a PDF or a CAD file or just a JPEG or a bitmap that's been scanned in and then just trace over top of them to create the walls, doors, and windows. You'll notice that each different wall in the model here has a different color. And that's because they're all different types of walls. This one's a two by six stone wall. Um, this one over here is stucco with stone. This is a two by six interior wall. And as you can go through and see the different wall types, they'll all have a different color. So that's a visual cue to you that each one of those walls are having different material that are going to quantify as well. So you can, again, do another visual look over to see, okay, yes, this one is supposed to be a stone wall. Um, this one over here is supposed to be a um, stone with stucco, so everything looks visually okay. Once you have everything traced over and all of the different pieces in the model that you want to quantify, that's when we start to look at the information to pass it over to BizTrack. To do that, we come up to our Tools pull-down menu, and under Tools, we're going to analyze the model. And there's a number of different ways that we can analyze the model. And the one way that we want to, to connect into BizTrack is generating a quote that we can ultimately pass over to BizTrack to analyze. So I'm gonna hit Generate Quote. And it's looking at all of the materials that I've taken into the model itself. And it's saying, do you want to load the quote from Envisioneer? Yes, I do. And it's also warning that some of the things that I've drawn don't have a cost associated. They've been set to zero. And that's intentional, so I can show you some things today. So all of the various elements that we drew in Envisioneer are all here in our quote. They're broken down into header groups. So here's all of my foundation construction materials. So you can see I've got anchor bolts. I need 77 of them. And they're going to be used with my sill plate. And then I've also included things like poured concrete slabs. So again, all of these different items, if you're not ultimately supplying them, you can always take them out of the list um, and not quantify them for the very beginning. But some of them um, have a great way of quantifying materials and giving you a back check. So if I know I have 924 cubic feet of poured slab concrete, if that was going to be maybe for a basement floor, that'll also give me quantities of information that I'm going to have if I'm going to be supplying in for radiant heating as an example, and if that's something that I'll be supplying, or a wire mesh for the floor, or any kind of rebar, at least I'm getting that kind of quantities as well. I've got my LVLs, I've got my eye joists, my rim board, there's some porch stairs, subfloor, so all of the various elements are here. You'll notice on the far right column, some of them have a bright red zero. That just means I didn't attribute a cost to them in Envisioneer. I left that blank. And that's going to be something that you can handle in either way. We can leave all of the costs left at zero so that when you ultimately export this out to BizTrack, you're going to take all of their pricing and the latest and greatest values from BizTrack and fill them in. So we'll leave them at zeros here because you want to get all of your pricing information, obviously, from BizTrack. We also have an integration module called the Updater. And in that Updater, it's going to look over to BizTrack, look at the current pricing and information, and it can bring it back here to our quote generator so that these values can automatically be filled in as well if you want to see them real time before you pass them over to BizTrack. 
once you see all of this information, if there's things that you want to swap out and change, so for example, maybe they're going to be using a different type of nail, you can highlight that in the list before sending it over to BizTrack, right click and tell it you want it to substitute it with something else. Or if ultimately it's been brought over and you decide that you're not going to be supplying that information, you can also delete um, that information, all of those products, um, from this quote that you're going to be sending over as well. So anything that you bring over can be changed and substituted um, before you bring it over to BizTrack. Then when you're ready to send this information over to BizTrack, you're going to come up here to the File pull-down menu and choose Export. You're going to give this um, file that you're sending over to BizTrack and name. So it could be Jones Project or Jones Quote, whatever you want to call it, whatever the name of that project is going to be. And then you choose your export. So I'm going to be sending this out to BizTrack and then clicking OK. And then from there, it gives me again just a, another view of the information that I'm going to be sending over to BizTrack. So in here, I can start regrouping the information if I want to group it before I send it over by maybe category or phase or manufacturer. I can do that or I can change the sort. Maybe I want it by SKU number, not description or ascending and descending. Right now, they're all organized by the groups that we've pre-organized in Envisioneer. Once you have it organized the way you want it, we then just hit export. It creates the file, and I'm just going to give it an assigned number here, one, two, three, four, five, six, just a phony number for today, and click OK. And then I tell it, I'm going to bring this into BizTrack in as a quote. So it can either be brought in as a quote or an order, and then I just click OK. And then it says it's been exported successfully over to BizTrack. So it's created that file that can be imported into BizTrack. And now I'm going to call upon our friends at BizTrack. So I'm going to introduce everyone to Chris. And Chris is going to be our presenter today in um, BizTrack. So I'm making Chris the presenter. And we're just going to say um, hello to Chris and welcome him to the presentation. So hello, Chris. We're now looking at your screen. All righty. Thank you very much. Yeah, so uh, just going to do a quick intro. Um, so, you know, first of all, I want to uh, thank the folks at uh, CADSOFT for giving us this opportunity. Um, you know, we do a, a direct integration um, with – get this out of the way here. Um, so, you know, why would you look at, uh, at upgrading your software to BizTrack? You know, or if you're using BizTrack, one of the most important things is, you know, increasing efficiency. And so with our partnership with CADSOFT, one of the ways we do that is by, you know, when we talk about exporting the file out of Envisioneer, uh, BizTrack can actually pull that file in and really with almost a complete hands-off approach uh, can create your quote directly in BizTrack. So, you know, so we're going to focus primarily on this. I'm going to show you a couple other things and kind of the way we, uh, we do things at BizTrack to make things a little bit uh, easier for you, but I'm not going to spend too much time here in PowerPoint, but, you know, obviously, we're moving dual entry through Envisioneer and, and other integrations. So, you know, when we're talking about bringing in the windows, you know, we have similar uh, integrations with things like your window packages. So we can do the same kind of thing, use the same tool that I'm going to show you for, for really your windows, uh, any kind of your doors or millwork that you're going to bring in through uh, any third party estimating software. So uh, we're going to focus on uh, on the CAD soft and Envisioneer uh, integration. So. You know, with that file, when it comes over, so I'm going to actually go into BizTrack now. And so this right here is a tool we have called eBusiness Browser. And an eBusiness Browser, effectively what you're going to do, the process for getting the file into, uh, from, from Envisioneer into, into BizTrack is we're going to export it, that file come over from Envisioneer, into a file system. And we have our file system here. And, and basically, anything that's incoming to eBusiness, it's going to drop that file right in here. And without you having to do a single thing, BizTrack is 
constantly looking for these files. Anything that pops into this particular folder, Bittrack's going to go, oh, I found one, and it grabs it, and it pulls it into eBusiness Browser. So here we have you know, a, a, a file that came over from, from Envisioneer. Um, if I want to take a look at it, so you can see right now it's, it's coming in as a, I believe this is going to come in as a quote, but it's been received from Envisioneer. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just take a quick look at what came over. So you know, we've got some section headers. We've got some products in here. Um, you know, that obviously is going to map to what, you know, we were looking at in the Envisioneer products. So when you have those sections, it'll bring them in. Um, it'll bring in any of the products that are mapped that you decided to export over. And the only step that you have to do, and this could actually be automated. So I'm going to do it manually for you here just so you can kind of see what it is. But in eBusiness Browser, there's this apply button here. And when I apply the file, you know, when I click that button, it just takes a second or two here, and it'll say uh, eventually in a couple seconds. You know, and again, this can be automated so that you don't even have to hit this button. It'll basically create your quote for you, um, you know, in, uh, you know, without uh, doing this one step. So let's see here. Figure it out. There we go. Document. I was just being a little impatient. Document successfully applied. So once you've got that document applied, um, so here it's, it is a quote, quote number 307695. So now I have that in BizTrack as a BizTrack document. Um, if I want to, I can right click, open up that document right from here. So you can see that in BizTrack. So this is our quote document that was created. So here it is with all the sections and all the, you know, all the pricing and if I have any costing in there, um, you know, so that's really, uh, you know, it, it's it's pretty straightforward. There's not a whole lot more to show. I think the only other uh, pieces that I would I would say uh, kind of, you know, things that work around this is that with this track, we try, try to make it so that it's very easy, you know, to get at this information. So uh, a couple things that we do. First of all, um, as you go through a project like this, you could have, you know, lots of things that could get associated with it. Um, so if I right click here and I say go to related documents, so one of the key features in BizTrack that really adds to that efficiency and productivity is if I look at the related documents, well, this thing first came in as an e-business document, came in as an import from Envisioneer. So we put that in there. It's now set up as a quote. Well, if you think about all the steps that can happen afterward, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to hopefully convert this quote to a sales order. That sales order may have special orders uh, associated with it. So with the related documents, you can actually associate all of these different pieces and parts, you know, in one place. And so to take that concept just one step further, you know, if I go into my BizTrack system and I go to um, go to order monitor. So this is where all your orders will come in in BizTrack, including the ones from, from Envisioneer. Um, and so if I take that related documents concept with a little bit further, right click, go to related documents, not only will I find, you know, the sales order, but the invoice, what delivery it was on, any POs that we may have associated or stock receipts. And BizTrack compiles all of this information for you automatically. So if you think about it, you start with Envisioneer, you're building that whole house quote, hopefully, you know, with all the different pieces and parts. You may have some special orders that come about. Uh, what we try to do with BizTrack is take all of that information that may come in from Envisioneer, from your window packages, and pull them all together in one place. And this just makes it, you know, a lot more efficient to resolve issues, to answer customer questions, and so on and so forth. So, but it really starts with uh, with that partnership, you know, with with us and the Envisioneer product uh, to say, you know, when you do all of your estimating in Envisioneer, you want that to come over nice, easily, very, very smoothly. Um, and so, you know, tying that in, uh, you know, to things like the dashboard, where with the e-business browser, we can provide a link right to whoever is working in Envisioneer, so that it's just a, a quick link on your dashboard to say, I want to go and take a quick look at what's going on in e-business browser. You know, and so I'll go and say, uh, like this, look at that particular date. So, and now this is not a received, this is now a document created file. So that's been already been created. So different statuses on the documents, just let you see where kind of we are with it. You know, has it been received? Did it, um, did it map properly? Uh, did it, uh, has the quotes actually already been created? So we tend to have a lot of statuses in BizTrack for your documents so you can know exactly what's going on with them 
and not have to, you know, call somebody up and say, what's going on with that quote? You know, we want you to be able to see exactly where we are with, uh, with any document that comes into BizTrack. And that sort of falls, you know, hand, you know, hand and foot with, uh, you know, the thing tools like Order Monitor, where I can go in and look at all my open documents, see what status they're in, and then go ahead and, you know, do things like what are the related documents? Are they on a delivery? So, you know, again, I'm not going to, you know, this, this is a, a great opportunity. The main focus today was to, to show you that we have a, a very, very solid integration uh, with uh, with Envisioneer. Um, you know, it's basically a hands-off process. The one step that I showed you, that apply process, you can actually set that up to where when you ex uh, bring in that document uh, from, from Envisioneer, um, it's sort of a no no touch process. You can just kind of go through, bring that in when you export it, and you say I'm exporting to BizTrack. We map that into that file system that I showed you. It pulls it into uh, the eBusiness browser without any interaction, and you can actually do the apply step. So basically, it can go from Envisioneer to a quote in BizTrack with once you say that okay, once you hit OK in Envisioneer and say I'm exporting it to BizTrack, you're going to have your quote effectively in a matter of seconds. It'll be all put together for you and no no dual entry. I mean, that's really the, the main thing. You don't never have to retype your quote. Uh, you can have all the sections in there. It'll map that directly as well. So, you know, the real value here is that, it, first of all, it takes away all that dual entry. It eliminates mistakes. Um, you know, it also, you know, we can uh, update your costs in Envisioneer as well. You know, so Envisioneer can pull costs from BizTrack or you can wait and it'll pull in the costs when you, uh, when you bring the quote in. You know, so BizTrack can have the, uh, you know, the, the most up-to-date costs, but we actually can run a routine where those costs do get pulled in, so you're getting the most up-to-date costs from BizTrack right in Envisioneer. So if you're doing a, you know, a large quote like that, you just want to see what the current costs are. It's nice to have that information available on uh, both sides of the fence. So, um, but you know, we try to make BizTrack you know, a very friendly uh, platform to work with, easy to use. We've designed it to look a lot like uh, you know an Excel or a, a Word document. Uh, we try to put those things that your users are going to be doing right in front. So, be business browser or you know doing these kind of quotes is something that's important to that user. We're going to put that right in front there um, on their dashboard, so it's just a one click away, um, along with any other items that may be important to them. Uh, you know whether it's checking on margin, whether it's uh, looking at products that might be below margin. You know these are the kind of things that we see. Uh, as people move to BizTrack, you know, they want to, why do you, why do you want to upgrade software? Because it's going to provide value. You know, it's going to increase efficiency. It's going to add to your sales, add to your margin. And so with BizTrack, we have a lot of great customers here uh, in the lumber industry, lumber and building materials industry. Um, and again, we're, uh, we're very thankful that uh, Envisioner invited us to, uh, to do this integration uh, webinar. And so uh, with that, I will, uh, hand it back to the folks at, at CADSoft. And again, uh, thanks very much for, uh, for your attention today. Thank you, Chris. That was very informative. And uh, I appreciate you taking that time. We do have some questions that um, have come up. So um, let's go over those. And if you do have any questions, anyone, please type them in now. And we'll be able to answer those for you um, right now. So the one question that came in um, during the presentation is, can we take the um, SKU numbers from part numbers from BizTrack and bring them into Envisioneer. Yes, you can do that. Um, when we're creating all of the different elements in Envisioneer, um, there are part numbers associated to everything. So as I showed you as an example, this window has a part number. Um, you could obviously go through and manually type them in, but I'm sure you have tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of SKUs. So we also have an import feature um, in our catalogs that allows you to import catalog items. They have to be organized in a certain um, way. So you can export them out of um, BizTrack and get just a data dump from BizTrack and then reorganize them so that you can import them into Envisioneer. Um, it just has to be in certain columns and headers. And once that's done and you import them, then those elements become elements in Envisioneer so that it knows that it's a window or it knows that it's um, house wrap or whatever it might be so that you are taking those SKUs, same SKU numbers from Envisioneer and ultimately matching them up and keying them back up with uh, BizTrack as well. 
So that's our, our first question. So I want to leave that question and answer poll out there. If you look in your side console uh, from Gold Meeting, you will see a questions area where you can type in any questions that you might have for either Chris at BizTrack or myself here at CADSoft. Um, and we'll be able to answer those questions for you. So learn how you can take and dump the information from one to the other and integrate the two products. Because as Chris said, it is going to just make it a lot smoother process to be able to send the information. You don't have to double entry, do anything like that again. Just send it over, it's there for you. So I'll just wait one further moment. And if there are no other questions, we will end off the webinar. But I'll just give it one more minute for any questions that might come up. And while we're waiting for those questions, I'm just going to put up, oh, we do have a question coming up right now. Is there a way to import kits from Envisioneer into BizTrack? So if you could um, just clarify there, oh, such as door kits. So Chris, if we put in a package like a door kit, can those be brought into BizTrack? Maybe a special order SKU, or can it have the entire kit of all the different products brought into BizTrack? Yeah, so I think uh, you know, for special order products, we could certainly do that. For kit products, I think in order for us to do that, we probably have to map what we would call a bill of materials SKU to that. So for some of the more common configurations, I think we could probably do it. For for some of the one-off kits, uh, I'm not sure, you know, how how uh, Envisioneer handles kits, uh, whether there's a kitting process that's in Envisioneer. Um, if we could map, you know, the individual bill of material SKU. So for some of your more common configurations, and I know there can be, for doors, there can be thousands of con possible configurations, but you know, I think for some of the more common, you know, standard, you know, if you're working with production builders and they're building, you know, uh, 2868 colonist uh, doors, you know, some of those common things, I'm, I'm, we should be able to do that. I, I don't know about, uh, you know, how we could, you know, do the configuration uh, and, and map it across other than that. So I think we would need a SKU that we could tie to what we call a bill of material SKU in BizTrack to, to accomplish that. Okay, that sounds great. Um, here is another question come in. What about the templates that are created by you and when we first installed Envisioneer here at Blowdorn, do I still have to do that now that we have this ability? Um, with the um, templates that we created for you, what they do, so for those of you that aren't aware, um, if we've created um, a catalog for you or a template for you, what we ultimately did is did the entire import process for you and mapped up all of your SKUs using this import catalog items. Because it is a lot of work to be able to bring in, especially if you have hundreds of thousands of SKUs that you're going to be bringing over from BizTrack, you have to um, line them all up in the correct column. So we have a service that does that for you. It's just a time saver for you. You can do this yourself, but if you find that it's too much work, we can do that for you as a service. What we also do is we create what we call a template. And what the template does is here under building locations is we're telling it what you're using for your framing information. So when you go to put in a wall and how you want to estimate the materials in the wall, are you using two by sixes? Are you using two by fours? Are you using them 16 inches on center, double top plate, single bottom plate? Do you have blocking? All of that information, we set that all up for you in the background as well. But again, that's something you can accomplish and do yourself. We just provide the surface if you are really too busy to do that. Um, so it's up to you if you want to get everything self set up and created, or if you want it to let us do that for you if it's a time issue. And then they're asking questions about tallies. So we did do um, a lot of work on tallies and bringing it over. And we were working with um, the support people at um, Epicor about tallies. So there are a couple different ways that you can do tallied, especially for when we're looking at things like their engineered lumber. So I'm just going to go into the foundation as an example where I have some LVLs. So when you're doing the LVLs, or any type of thing that you want to tally, 
under the quantity tab here, you can say include in cut lengths so that when it's doing the um, quote that we're going to send over, it's going to give you a total linear footage of LVL, but it's also going to include the cut lengths. So under the purchased items here, you can add in all of your cut lengths that you want to. So those could be in two foot in increments or one foot, and it will include those cut lengths as well for you to pass them over. And um, BizTrack will absorb those for you um, as a line item showing the, the cut lengths. Okay, next question. Is the export going to automatically go into a specified folder, folder, or is it something we need to set up individually with our IT department? So, Chris, when we export our information out from Envisioneer to um, BizTrack, what they're wondering, is there a certain location where you want it placed? Um, because that can be something we do in Envisioneer um, as part of the settings here, and I'm just going to delete all of the items in our quote here out so that I can get into the options. We can specify a folder where it can be sent. Uh, let me just grab all the rest of these SKUs here to the top and delete. So when I look at our options and when we're exporting items out, we can specify where the file is being sent or if it's a local folder or if you're going to run the external program on the export. So, um, Chris, is there a certain place where you want them to save these files? Yeah, I mean, the typical spot is uh, you know, we were looking at the file system. There's a, an e-business folder on the server for BizTrack and there's a folder called incoming. And so, if you, uh, it's not I think you know in in the e-business browser you can configure that. Um, that's kind of the standard place we take it. So when it pushes it into that incoming uh, folder, uh, BizTrack is constantly sort of pulling that folder to see if any new files have come in. And so once you do the export and if you push it into that folder, BizTrack will just keep looking, 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 and when it finds one, it grabs it and brings it into that e-business browser. So uh, so that e-business incoming folder is kind of the standard, but in e-business you can configure. Uh, that tool, if you wanted to push, you know, different documents into uh, different incoming folders, that should be possible. Wonderful. And let me see if there's, that seems to be all the questions that are up there right now. And yeah, I'm getting a thanks. I think I'm good now. So everybody's understanding the entire process. So. Um, that's great. So I'm just going to port over to a contact screen. So if you had um, any questions or oh, one more question is actually being oh, just a thank you there. Wonderful. Um, if you have any questions about BizTrack and the product, here's the contact information on our screen where you can get in more information from BizTrack um, so that you can then re I have recorded this webinar and I'll be providing it up on our YouTube channel and in our integration partner document where we've kept all of the different series that we've done over the last few weeks. And I'll also be providing that to the folks at Epicor to share as well. So if you um, want to review the webinar again to understand the entire process, you can do so. So I want to thank everyone for joining us today. I know everyone has hectic schedules lately, and I appreciate you taking out the time to join us today. And a Chris, a great thank you to, to you for joining us and giving this valuable information to all of our clients as well. Well, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. No problem. And thanks, everyone. And I hope you have a great day. Thanks and bye-bye.